Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of High Vibe Monday and this week we're going to talk about how to manifest your big vision. I'm really excited about this episode. Um, it's been um, quite a, a long time in the making <clears throat> and it's, um, I guess I realized that when I do business Akashic Record sessions, I see people's big vision. And when I do single sessions, my frustration is that I know that a lot of people who come to me for these readings will probably not implement the big vision because first it feels too big. And I've had that with a long-term client of mine, actually. She still hasn't implemented her big vision because it's too scary for her. And also, um, you know, life has a way to get back to normal. You know, once you've seen your big vision and it's really exciting, and I've had so many people say how mind blown they were and how excited, but if you don't um, manifest that big vision, then it's worth nothing. You know, it's a little bit like, um, <laughs> this is going to sound a little bit, um, well, well, never mind. I, I um, with my ex, <laughs> my first husband, I saw his full potential when I met him. I could see that he had great things in him. The problem is, 12 years down the line, he had done none of the things that his potential um, showed me. And so it was incredibly frustrating for me because nothing ever happened with him. We talked about things and then and then it would just, yeah, nothing would happen. So it's a little bit the same thing here. I'm not saying that you're like my ex-husband, but I'm giving this example to illustrate how we can have an, a really big potential but never actually um, actualize it. And this is what I love helping my clients with. So. Um, I want to talk about this big dream of yours, this big vision. So is it to make the world a better place? Is it to publish a book? Is it to change your industry? Is it to become the most highly regarded expert in your field? Um, is it to create an empire? Or is it to take a gap year with your kids in a van and, and travel Europe or America, or Australia, wherever you are? It doesn't matter what it is how are you going to manifest it and this is what we're going to talk about today so let's get started as stephen covey says um begin with the end in mind so um i have a series of let me just check with my notes uh six steps to make your big vision happen in the real world so step number one is visioning so i want you to write down your big dream and script it okay so um i don't know if you like me you like to write real scripts i've, I've written a, a film script and i think it's so much fun but you don't have to get into that sort of um <laughs> writing technically you know um because there's a way to write scripts where you describe the scene <clears throat> and then you have dialogues and it, there's constraints into script writing that don't come into regular writing but um, I'm stranding a bit. It's just the author of me that it gets excited because I have actually done proper scripts of things that I wanted to manifest. So I want you to think about what is that exactly would it look like? What will it feel like? It's really important to tap into the feeling when you vision your your big uh, your big dream. Are you alone? Who's with you? Do you have someone supporting you? Do you have a coach that helps you to make this happen? So that's step number one. Step number two, I want you to do some brainstorming around everything that needs to be done for this vision to become a reality. So what do you need? Who will you need to be with you? Um, what changes will need to be done in your life for this to happen? How much money will you need for this big vision? start doing a, a literal brain dump so this is kind of the messy part of it you have like a, a notebook or even some loose paper and write everything that comes to you um maybe like for half an hour just dump it you know what exactly and, and try and, and write and don't try to write it in particular order don't care about the spelling or anything like that you just dump everything down on paper and it doesn't have to be done the same day as step one okay um, these things need to be done little by little you know when you have a moment so that you don't feel too overwhelmed step number three three sorry not three three is the planning or what I call the mapping so now that you have you know what you need and you have the steps I want you to start organizing those steps 
into different categories, into different maybe um, <clears throat> spaces. So you can use what's called a spider diagram um, or um, there's another word for it that I can't uh, think of it right now, which is basically you put the name of your big vision in the middle and then you put one idea, um, it's sort of like a tree, uh, a branch. Um, so suppose I was, uh, my big dream was to write a book. <clears throat> I would have my book in the center, in the circle. And then I drew, I would draw a, a sort of branch or something that spins off the, the circle in the middle. And I would say, um, structure. Then I would say, um, illustrations. Then I, if there is any is illustrations in my book, I would say, um, editing. I would say publishing. I would say, um, the actual writing. Maybe I want to go on a retreat, whatever it is. So you, you get the idea. Right. So that's step number th number three. Yeah. Once you've done step number three, I want you to get on to step number four, which is to prioritize all these items and break them down into the smallest possible unit that you can. So this is where using a planning tool can be really useful. And maybe you already have one um, at hand. If you don't, I recommend um, Asana, which I've been using for now about a year, and it's really, really changed my life. It's a free tool, there's an, a pay option, and I will share uh, an affiliate link in the show notes on my website, which is ICanHelpYouThrive.com. If you go onto the blog, you'll find the show notes for today's episodes. And it's only a small affiliate commission that I get for recommending it, but why not? You know, I'm in business. Um, so, you know, let's get back to my example of uh, my book. The first thing that I need to do to write my book is I would say to get a notebook for it and that's what I always do so I'm going to show you the notebook that I have for the book I'm writing at the moment um, well I've done a lot of mapping so far but I haven't written it yet but this it's on in the cards so get yourself a specific notebook for that project for that vision for whatever it is let's call it a project and um, well in it I want to show you a little bit what I've done um, I've put the the title here um, I do some journaling in it. I do uh, notes. I have um, I've done a, a proposal, so it's gone into the details. But I've also done lots of different little elements, and I write everything in the same book uh, with no particular order. I take notes in. Um, I mentioned this before in the in the podcast, but if you're new to me, I use bullet journaling to take notes, which I find it's very very um, inspiring and very easy to find ideas again. Whereas I used to write everything in longhand and I just couldn't uh, make the difference between uh, one idea or the other. Even for the notes for this podcast, I now take, do bullet journaling, which really helps me to be able to stay on track with all the ideas that I want to talk about today for you uh, in this particular podcast and all the podcast episodes I've done before. It's really changed the way I do. Um, I take notes, uh, whether it's at conferences, whether it's uh, when I do training or my own training or when I do someone else's training. Uh, go back to my episode on journaling, especially on my website. Um, on the podcast tab, you have the list of the entire um, podcast, um, just the list of each episode, which make it, make it, makes it much easier to, to find. If you go to the very first one at the bottom of the page, you'll find journaling, click on it, it'll take you to the show notes. Because on the blog, you only have the latest five blog posts visible on, on the page. And <clears throat> I have shared a link to a video on Facebook. Now you have to have um, Facebook to be able to, to watch this video, but it's a brilliant video on bullet journaling. Brilliant journaling is, is just this fantastic tool. And I'll have to talk about it again because for the tracking, which is on the last part of this um, this podcast, I will also suggest um, uh, something. So um, please refer back to my podcast on journaling. So you want to break it down to the smallest thing. You know, is there, for example, uh, this is not related to the book writing, but suppose I wanted to um, travel to a certain place. I might need to have my passport done, and to, in order for my passport to be renewed, I will need a birth certificate. So. I know the steps, birth certificate. When the birth certificate gets here, then I go to wherever it is in my country that I need to go to to get my passport. And um, and, and then I have to see, you know, um, sequence, how long it will, will it take when it depends on someone else to deliver it for you. 
I know this sounds basic, but um, this is just the idea, is that in the prioritizing, you also want to break it down into really, really, really small steps and organize it, okay? Uh, well, the beauty of Asana is that you can have a project and then you have tasks, and these tasks can be broken down in um, subtasks, and it, it creates this beautiful tree where you, it's quite fluid and you can move from one to the other. You can also move the items up and down the list if you realize, oh, actually, I need to do this first. So you just drop and drag. It's really great. And you can use it on your phone as well, which I found has completely changed my life. I can now, if I have an idea, instead of acting on it right away or if instead of it um, just floating away, if I, I have a project um, in my Asana, I just go straight in with my phone and I quickly put the steps or the ideas and I just park it. And then when I have time, I go back into it with my computer and start organizing things in a much. So the, all this brain dumping and all this organizing can be done directly in the sign -up. I love it. Now, step number five, which is the step that a lot of people skip because they don't realize that it's important. And I have to hold up my hand that I have done this even recently. So I'm still learning. Step number five is to align with this project. Now, I want you, once you've reached step five, to take a few days to let the dust settle. Because you've worked on this big vision, you've done your scripting, uh, you've done, um, so I'm just going through the steps. You've done your planning, your um, prioritizing, your brain dump, but now you wanna let it sit a little bit just to see if it feels aligned. And the reason why I'm uh, asking you to do this is because uh, I myself made a mistake recently and, and I've made it many, many times before that I think of a, a project I wanna do and it sounds like a good idea, okay? But I have been thinking it with my head. So it's like in my business, I think, oh yeah, it'd be good if I could write a business book right now. So I write it down and I get really excited, enthusiastic. Uh, I sign up for a challenge to get things moving. And then I get to the point where I don't realize, but it's off. It might be not be off because it's the wrong thing to do, but it might be off in terms of timing. And so it's really important at one step to take a step back, sorry, and to re to align with it and ask yourself a couple of questions from your inner guide or your higher self or whoever you you know from your inner world how does this feel to me right now is this the right time to implement this vision um do i know enough am i ready and it, it could be that you you identify that you have some fears around it in which case that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be doing it but then you need to do a bit of mindset work okay this is not part of this podcast episode, but just, just to understand that you need to be completely aligned to this project, but it, you need to be, it needs to be aligned as well in terms of, of timing and in terms, because you could be getting on a project because it, someone else has done it in their business and it sounds like a great idea, but actually it wouldn't be the right thing for you. And I've seen that happen with my clients again and again, especially when they've been working with someone else who has a very um, structured and perhaps a little bit pushy or masculine way of doing things and so they tell the client you should be doing this 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 then this but then it overrides their intuition and then at one point they they have this little you know how i've said before because i've been talking about intuition a lot how it can be really subtle and it's really quiet and silent so if you have someone else in your life that's very vocal and that says you know this has worked for me and it's going to work for you and and their enthusiasm is lovely you know i i can be like that as well you know i'm not saying that you know i don't do these things to other people sometimes i have visions for other people and i get so excited and it, it might not feel right for them and it's that's what's really important tune in see you're still at the planning stage you haven't done anything you haven't invested money in it yet just check, is this the right thing for me? And leave it, um, don't wait for the answer, just leave it for a while, give yourself a couple of days and see what your intuition is gonna tell you. Or see if you can see some signs. Go back to my um, podcast episode about signs. As I said, it's, it's just after the journaling one, I think, probably two or three, um, the episode two or three. Ask for a sign, is this really aligned? Um, I'm lucky that I've, I've asked my team in spirit, my business team, to not make things happen if it's not for my highest good. So if something doesn't happen or if, if I'm, you know, I'm asking for something and, 
and it, it doesn't manifest then I know that there's something that's off and so I go back I align and I, I think about it so once you're fully aligned with it and as I said that might involve some mindset work or some journaling um, clearing some fears and all that and that's fine then you want to start to implement it that's step six and so what you want to do at this stage is to pick one item to implement at a time and perhaps set yourself a goal per week, you know, because um, I'm going back to Stephen Covey's beautiful work about the seven um, habits of uh, really effective people. And he often set, talks about the fact that we tend to be um, stuck into the daily grind. You know, we do things that are either unimportant or not urgent we waste a lot of time i don't know if you know about his quadrant with the four squares i don't have it in mind just yet but that's something that maybe i'll expand on in another podcast but uh, we tend to be spending a lot of time in the quadrant that's on the left top which i think is the urgent but not important and that's because whenever something happens uh, all of a sudden and we need to manage a crisis, we have to tend to it right away. But then we tend to neglect the right upper hand um, quadrant. And what I'll do actually, I'll try and share a little image on my um, on my show notes where you see the quadrant. So it's easier for you to, as you listen to the podcast, to see what I'm talking about. I think I made my own um, image uh, a while back. And um, when you spend, you, you tend to neglect the bigger vision, which is on the right hand side on the top. It's important, but it's not urgent. But everything that's not important, but urgent tends to come in the way because you are firefighting, basically. And firefight, people who constantly firefight do not manifest their dreams. So that's why you need to, the, the whole, there's a, a big, um, a big exercise uh, in planning and making big things happen where you need to prioritize so you need to identify all the things that you have to do you need to be able to drop some of them that are either not urgent not important you need to start having a way to manage your life where um, the crisis don't always come all the time and some of it can be energetic if you're addicted to crisis because people are so it's funny at, at one point uh, after I left the corporate world I wanted to create a company called an adrenaline healthy adrenaline because I felt there was a lot of people who thrived on adrenaline and I call them adrenaline junkies so if you um, if you get a high and we do and, and adrenaline has a high to it in a way um, from having to resolve something on the spot or at the last moment or if you're a procrastinator and it's only at the last minute when the deadline arrives that you want to get on with it that's fine but at the same time this means that you probably are not working on the long-term projects that would need to be done a little bit at a time every day and this is something that I've talked about a lot with my clients who have as part of their business writing a book where usually a book will always be put on the back burner because it's not urgent but it is important it can be incredibly important so this is the point I want to make you need to start to implement every day or every week just make it a task and in, if you're in a sana you have a way to have your tasks for the week and that it, it's a recurring task where you're going to do one item on this list of this big vision that you've identified in this project um, and that's the only way that you can make big things happen don't wait for to have a break don't wait until you have a, your business have reached a certain level because it will never happen every time you will push the goalpost further and that's what people do especially because the mind has a way to if you have a fear that you haven't um, addressed that relates to this big vision that fear will mask as not enough time or it will mask as i'm not ready and so it will um, shape shift and come into your life and try to block you from from doing these small steps so um, take it from me uh, it's it's really important not to let the daily grind and the crisis and and, and everybody's uh, requests as well if you're like me and you want everyone to be happy you will have a tendency to say yes to everything that people ask you of and that's maybe one of the steps that's really important um i think i read recently i can't remember who said it that uh, success come to the people who learn how to say no um so that's uh, the other thing i want you to do about this implementation is to also track it down okay because what gets measured gets improved so if you don't track have i done this one thing this week um 
into your um, into a sort of diary where you see the progress because sometimes we feel like um, we have to have do a lot for things to progress um, the way we want but very often it's more in the small steps that is going to happen so it's important to keep going it's the same if you have um, a weight loss goal goal um, it's not going to be going on a big diet for two weeks that's going to really change your body shape it's going to be making those small tweaks every day like snacking on, on fruit instead of nuts or bread and cheese it's going to be uh, walking to the office instead of um, taking the bus if you can uh, it's going to be um, well, well you get the idea it's, it's going to be cooking a meal instead of getting a takeaway and these all compute they all stack up and it's the same with your big vision You've got to be, and I should have included possibly for some of you, um, your big vision is to lose some weight because maybe you'd like to be more active and, and you have some health concerns. Not everybody who's um, overweight has health concerns, but maybe you do. So um, if you try to do everything in a big way, you, you're not going to do it because we have busy lives. We don't have hours um, available to us to do these big vision. We have to carve it out one step at a time. So I will be doing a masterclass on how to make your big vision a reality. And if you're interested, I will put the, the link uh, in the show notes and in this video on YouTube, I'll put the link under the YouTube video as well. I don't have a date yet because I haven't done this masterclass before. And so I have a lot of prep to do. But if you want to make sure that you're informed when the masterclass is going to happen, then please sign up for this masterclass. It's going to be free. Uh, and it will last about an hour. I'm not sure yet if people will get the replay. Um, I really want people to come live and come spend some time with me so I can really um, discuss with them and debate ideas and help them to have something done by the end of the session rather than you know all these uh, webinars where people sign up and they don't come up and then they don't listen. And I, again, I hold up my hand and I, I do that a lot. My, my life is so busy. I look at someone I think oh this sounds really interesting I sign up and then I don't have the time to watch it I don't make it priority it's more about priorities um, so um, at this point I don't know yet but you'll have all the information if you sign up for this uh, master class and uh, I look forward to talking to you in a more one-to-one um, -one way in this master class soon bye for now <laughs>